O God, come to my assistance. Lord, make haste to help me. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. My brothers and sisters, tonight, we enter into the solemn mysteries of our Lord's passion, death, and resurrection. With quiet prayer and attentive anticipation, let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, who as an example of humility for the human race to follow, caused our Savior to take flesh and submit to the cross, graciously grant that we may heed his lesson of patient suffering and so merit a share in his resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Let us pray. O God, to show us the way of salvation, you chose that the standard of the cross should go before us, and you fulfill the ancient prophecies in Christ's passion from death to life. In your compassion, free us when in sin and in time of distress. 
through the contemplation of his sufferings, make us burn with zeal for the honor of your church and with grateful love of you, through Christ our Lord.
Almighty, ever-living God, when your Son was handed over and endured the Passion, he seemed abandoned by you. Yet he cried out to you from the cross and destroyed death forever. By his death and resurrection, may we look forward to that day when the poor of the world are saved, the downtrodden lifted up, and the chains that bind the oppressed be broken through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord has fed us with finest wheat. He has fed us with honey from the rock. From daughter Zion, all her majesty has departed. Her princes have become like stags that can't find no pasture, and that run without strength before the hunter. Zion. Jerusalem remembers in the days of her affliction and bitterness all the precious things that were hers from the days of old when her people fell into the land of the foe and there was none to help her. The adversary saw her and mocked at her downfall. Hey. Jerusalem has sinned greatly, therefore she has become a thing unclean. All who honored her despise her, for they have seen her nakedness. And now she sighs and turns her face away. Tet. Uncleanness clung to her skirts, she took no thought of her doom. Therefore her fall is terrible. She has no comforter. O oh Lord, behold my affliction, for the enemy has triumphed. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, 
Return to the Lord your God. Jerusalem, Jerusalem, return to the Lord your God. A reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brothers and sisters, since we have a great high priest who has passed through the heavens, Jesus, the Son of God, let us hold fast to our confession, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. So let us confidently approach the throne of grace to receive mercy and to find grace for timely help. Every high priest is taken from among men and made their representative before God to offer gifts and sacrifices for sins. He is able to deal patiently with the ignorant and the erring, for he himself is beset by weakness. And so, for this reason, must make sin offerings for himself as well as for the people. No one takes this honor upon himself, but only when called by God, just as Aaron was. In the same way, it was not Christ who glorified himself in becoming high priest, but rather the one who said to him, You are my son. This day I have begotten you. Just as he says in another place, you are priest forever, according to the order of Melchizedek. In the days when he was in the flesh, 
he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death, and he was heard because of his reverence. Son though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered, and when he was made perfect, he became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him, declared by God, high priest according to the order of Melchizedek. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the days when he was in the flesh, he offered prayers and supplications with loud cries and tears to the one who was able to save him from death. And he was heard because of his reverence. I find that often we rush through Lent and Holy Week on our way to Easter. It can be difficult to fully immerse ourselves into the experience of Holy Week. We naturally look at everything from the point of view of the resurrection, which is, of course, true. In some way, however, our knowledge of the rest of the story, the resurrection, can separate us from fully experiencing the reality of the passion and death of Jesus. We tend to forget that 2,000 years ago, during these days in Jerusalem, the resurrection had not happened yet. Jesus had spoken about rising on the third day. But his disciples were lacking the experience and knowledge that, in hindsight, we have. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, when he celebrated the Passover meal with his disciples, and when he carried his cross to Golgotha, Jesus' mother, the disciples, and the other people around Jesus could not really comprehend why all this was happening. When Jesus died on the cross, they had to think that this was the end. At that moment, they had no knowledge of the resurrection. That is what they experienced. That is all they saw. Jesus dies on the cross and is laid in the tomb. I would like to invite us all to stop there for a moment. At the very moment when Jesus commends his spirit into the hands of his father and dies. Let us put ourselves into the position of Mary and John at the foot of the cross and the disciples watching from a distance. Death is the most terrifying thing we face. Watching your son and your friend die on a cross must be overwhelming and devastating. Let that sink in. Let's not rush beyond that. I know it's painful. The experience of death is painful and terrifying. Last Friday was the fourth anniversary of my daughter Teresa's death. And tomorrow, will be the anniversary of her funeral. 
I'm not saying this to ask for sympathy, but only as a point of reference. I know that many of you have experienced similar losses and can understand what a terrible and excruciating experience it is to lose a child, a sibling, a spouse, a parent, or another person we love. Even being Christian, even knowing that we look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come, we mourn the loss of someone who died. This pain, this mourning, can be overwhelming, and everyone experiences it differently. In my own experience, I have found comfort in knowing that Jesus wept at Lazarus' tomb. Jesus, who is the resurrection and the life, mourned the death of his friend. Et lacrimatus est Jesus, and Jesus wept. Every time I hear these words, I am struck by them. They show us how Jesus entered fully into the experience of being human. They console me. We are not alone. Jesus' reaction to seeing Lazarus in the tomb has helped me realize how much sadness is an expression of love. We are sad precisely because we loved the person who is no longer here and because we continue to love them. Our love does not end when a person dies. To be honest, I don't ever want to lose the sadness of losing Teresa. I want to learn to live with it, but I don't want to lose the sense of mourning and sadness when I think of her. When I cry, Teresa is with me. Our sadness becomes especially painful when we come to anniversaries, when the wounds of our soul are torn open again and again. This week, we remember the anniversary of Jesus' death. Like the death of a family member or friend, his death fills us with great sadness. When we cry, Jesus is with us. Jesus has shown us the way to the Father. We do indeed have a high priest who is able to sympathize with our weaknesses, one who has similarly been tested in every way, yet without sin. The way to the Father leads through the experience of death, that of Jesus and our own. There is no other path to the resurrection. In these remaining days of Lent and Holy Week, I invite us all to stop, to take the time to see the cross and to visit Jesus at his tomb. Let us weep as Jesus wept and allow ourselves to enter more deeply into the experience of these holy days.
Let us pray to our Redeemer, who suffered for us, was buried and rose from the dead. Our response is, Lord, have mercy on us. Lord and Master, for us, you became obedient even to death. Keep us faithful to God's will in the darkness of our lives. Lord, have mercy on us. Lord, have mercy. Jesus, our life, by dying on the cross, you destroyed hell and death. Grant that we may die with you and rise with you in glory. Christ our King, you were the scorn of the people, a worm, not a man. Teach us to tread your path of humility. Jesus, our Savior, you laid down your life for your friends. Let us love one another as you have loved us. Jesus, our hope, you stretched out your hands on the cross to embrace all ages. Gather all God's scattered children into the kingdom of salvation. Oremos, receptus salutaribus moniti, et divine institutione formati, audemus dicere. Pater nostre, qui es in celis,
Let us pray. Merciful God, your light has filled the world. This light has freed us from the power of the enemy. Your radiant love has left our presence, but we await with hopeful hearts for the light of the world to return in full glory in the resurrection, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Our help is in the name of the Lord. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go forth in peace.